Hello and welcome to this presentation on how to prepare now if you are thinking of a career in teaching. My name is Natasha Marin. I'm one of the careers advisors here in the Maynooth University Career Service. The Career Service, um, previously based in the Career Development Centre, is now open online. So we're fully available online um, for uh, your questions or appointments or, or anything like that going forward. So please do feel free to get in touch with us. What I will take you through in this session today is a very brief overview of how you can engage with the career service and then we will look at the routes into teaching both post primary and primary in Ireland and what you can do to be well prepared in advance. And at the end, then I will take your questions as well if you have any any questions around anything that I've covered or, or anything else relating to getting into teaching. So the career service, which was previously based in the Career Development Centre within the Arts Building, is now open online. We are available Monday to Friday. We have a system called Careers Connect, which is your careers and employability portal. It's basically a way that you can engage with us. Um, you can link to, to it from our website or directly on mu.ie forward slash careers connect. Um, you can also find lots of useful information on our website. So on the Maynooth University website, under current students, scroll down, you'll see the career service there um, and that will take you directly to our website as well. So this shows you what Careers Connect looks like when you log into Careers Connect using your student number and your password. This is the first page that you will see. So in Careers Connect, if you click the little envelope icon there at the top of the, the screen, you can send your, your queries to, to us, the, the careers advisors, send us in your questions and we will reply to you um, as, as soon as possible. Um, so we are available every day to, to answer your questions. So please do feel free to send your, your queries through, to us through Careers Connect. If you would prepare, prefer to book an appointment to discuss your, your questions with us, that's absolutely fine. You can book appointments with us. Um, they're usually available every day uh, on Careers Connect. So in Careers Connect, go into book, click appointments and select a day and a time that, that suits you. Uh, book yourself in and then appointments are running through Microsoft Teams. So book yourself in for, for a time that suits and then a careers advisor will call you on Teams um, at, at the time that you, that you booked in for. You can also use Connect to find any upcoming careers events, so some of them to do with uh, recruitment events, sometimes to do with just information on getting into particular careers. So there may be some events that are of interest to you. You can view them and book them through Careers Connect. Also, Going forward, you will find details on jobs that are advertised under the graduate jobs section. And in the resources section of Connect, which I think will, will be quite useful for you now, um, we do have um, slides from presentations, for example, this presentation. Um, information sheets on various careers, including primary and post-primary teaching under the resources section that, that circled there. Um, so the resources section of Careers Connect actually links you back to the careers website where you can find a lot of, of useful career related information. And it is quite a good place to start in gathering your, your information. OK, so to start with post primary teaching in Ireland, the qualification to train as a teacher is the professional master of education. It's a two year programme and it's run in various different institutions. Um, so there are the four NUI universities, so that is Maynooth University. Uh, UCC in Cork, UCD in Dublin and NUI Galway. Um, and then the PME, Professional Master of Education, is also run in DCU, in Trinity College, in UL for certain subjects um, and also in Hibernia College. 
The application systems are different for the various PME programmes depending on the universities to which you are applying. For the four NUI universities, so that's Maynooth University, UCC, UCD and NUI Galway, you use one form uh, with multiple choices listed on the one form and places are given out based on a points-based system. For DCU, it is a similar system, but it's a separate pack form. And again, they use a points based system for Trinity College. They have an online application form on their website and then places are given out based on the application form and then performance at interview for the University of Limerick. Again, it's an online application form and then places are given out based on performance at interview. Um, and again, for our Hibernia College, it is an online application form and places are given out based on performance at interview. So I have grouped the information based on how the application processes work. So for the NUI universities, so that is for Maynooth, uh, UCD, UCC and NUI Galway, um, it's one centralised application system. It's kind of similar to what you would have remembered from CAO. It's through the PAC application system. It's one form um, for all of your choices. The closing date generally each year, they're, they're fairly consistent, they don't tend to change, but obviously these are the dates from last year. The closing date is usually the end of January. There is an application fee of €100 Euro, and that covers your application to the four universities, but you can apply for as many or as few of those universities as you'd like. The basic entry requirements are that you have to get at least a 2-2 in your degree, but there are other, there are other requirements in terms of actually getting a place on the course as well. Um, places are allocated using a point system very similar to CAO and you can find all about it, find out all about it on the PAC website which is pac.ie. So this is what the PAC website looks like. Um, as you can see, PAC is used by a lot of different uh, institutions for postgrad applications on that list there. You will see Maynooth University listed separately. Um, but when you are looking at the PME information, you actually look at the arrow here for the Professional Master of Education in the NUI universities. That's where you will find the information for the PME NUI application process. So at any stage, you can go on to the PAC website. You can have a look through the website, familiarize yourself with the information. The first step in sending in an application is to register just to create an account on the site. You can do that at any stage. You don't need to wait until final year to do it. You can do it at any stage just so you're familiar with the site. And um, There are no implications. It's basically just setting up an account on the site as, as you would on, on any other site just to have a user account there. So you can do that at any stage. The application process to the NUI universities can initially seem a little bit complex when, when you look at it. Um, basically, how it is set up is that you have the choice to apply to up to the four universities, Maynooth University, UCC, UCD and NUI Galway. And then if you have two subjects in your degree, you don't have to have two subjects, but if you do have two subjects in your degree, that means you have up to eight choices because you have two choices, one for each of your subjects in each university. It's set up like this um, because there is a need um, from the Department of Education's perspective to increase the number of people training to teach in the shortage subjects. The shortage subjects are languages, maths and science. Um, so there are basically different doors leading into the courses. So if you were, let's say, for example, that your subjects were Irish and geography, um, you have and you're applying to all of the universities on the PAC system. So in the NUIs, that means you have eight options. So your first choice could be Maynooth University Irish, because Irish is a sorted shorted subject. Your second choice could be Maynooth University Geography 
So you'll usually choose your preferred university first and then choose which door you try to get into there. Um, if say UCD was your second choice, then number three on your form would be UCD Irish and number four on your form would be UCD Geography. And then after that, whether it was Galway or Cork accordingly. So you fill in your form in order of preference. Um, you would usually start with your preferred university. So you'd list whichever university you want to study at first and then within that university you have two doors you can go in um, either through your first subject or your second subject assuming you have two teaching subjects as regards what you can teach afterwards doesn't matter which door you go in it's literally which door you use to get into the course once you meet the teaching council criteria and we'll look at those later on once you meet the teaching council criteria whether you got offered a place in the pme irish or the pme geography or the pme um, maths it doesn't matter once you meet the teaching council criteria one is just your way of getting into the course Places in the PME at the NUI universities and also at DCU are awarded using a point system. Both the NUI universities and DCU use the very same system in terms of how they allocate points. Um, they use, they both use the PAC website, but they use separate sections of the PAC website. But the system that they use, um, similar to CAO, grade people according to the points that they have. And they calculate the points that you have based largely on your most recent exam results. That's why it's useful to know that now, um, because if you are applying for the PME um, in semester one of final year, then the grades that you will be judged off, the grades that will be used to calculate your points will be your results from second year. So the better you do in second year, um, the higher your points will be. So the, the, the greater your chances of getting a place on the course. So at the end of second year, you will have um, a result for, for each of your subjects um, and you'll have an average of those. And that average grade will be what is used to calculate your points when you are applying for the for the PME. So this, and you can have a look in more detail on the PAC website, is basically what the points table looks like. It looks quite confusing. Um, basically, what you've got across the top there is the four universities, Cork, UCD, NUI Galway and Maynooth University. And then along the left hand side, you have got all of the various subjects or doors that you can go in. And then in the various columns, you have the number of points required. Um, so the points, as you look at the at the table, there are just random numbers um, but the points actually equate to your grades so what you will see on the pack website is when you calculate your grades so you will get a mark at the end of second year for let's say your marks for English and you will also get a mark for French, if your other subject is French, you add your marks together, you get your overall mark. That is the, the, the mark that is used to calculate your points. So if you're applying in final year, you'll be using your second year marks to calculate what your points uh, will be. Like CAO, points vary every year, so it isn't possible to predict what the points will be in any given year. This year the points went up, that doesn't always happen. It's not possible to predict what they will, what the points will do. So the only area where you have control there is that the higher your grades at the end of second year, the higher your points will be. So that's where you have control. So that's why it's actually useful to know that now, because the better you do in second year, um, the better your chance of being offered a place when you apply for the PME in third year. So if you are looking on the, the PAC website, this is where you will see the details. So as I mentioned, you, you register. Um, at any stage, then you log in when the applications are, are open um, to start your application. Closing dates are often extended. So the initial date for the PME for the NUIs was the end of January. This was then extended until mid-February. 
on the PAC website, you go in, you click on apply and your application form appears in there. It's a relatively straightforward application form looking for details of what you've studied, the grades you've got and information for the from for the teaching council on the modules that you have studied. So it is not the most complex application form to, to do, which, which hopefully is reassuring. Where people have concerns every year is if, as happened this year, the, the points go up and the points are unpredictable. Hopefully they'll go down again next year, but we don't know what they will do. Um, what can you do to increase your chances, make sure that you're in the best position possible? Um, well, I suppose the first thing that you can do is to make sure you work as hard as, as you possibly can, um, that the, the higher your, your grades in second year, the better your chance of applying. Sometimes that doesn't always work for people. Um, circumstances can can have a role. You know, life can happen. Um, things don't don't always go to plan. If it's a case that that it turns out um, that your second year results aren't all that, that you would have liked them to be, that's not the end of the road. Um, if it was a case that you applied in third year with your second year points, you didn't get a place. Like I said, you know, there, there's always other options. So what you could do is you could apply again the following year with your third year results. Oftentimes for people, their third year results are, are better. So you can apply with your third year results. There are also other ways of picking up extra points. So this can be from additional qualifications. So perhaps you did a PLC before you came to, to college. Um, so you might have other qualifications, other training that you've done in some area, um, and you could claim additional points for that. You can also claim points for paid professional experience, paid relevant experience, and I'll explain a little bit about that. Um, and equally, not all universities use the PAC system, so you could also apply to other universities um, where they you have an interview process as part of the assessment so it allows you to focus on more than just the grades. So increasing your points, this you can read through more on the, the PAC website um, because you, as you can see there's quite a lot of information in it and it's not relevant to, to everybody but as I said if you have additional qualifications you can add those to your points tally that does give you additional points to, to, to increase your points tally. And equally paid professional experience. So it has to be paid and then it, you have to be able to document it. So you have to be able to get a letter from your employer to confirm that it was paid, that you worked for a specified amount of time. And it has to be either related to education, related to teaching, related to working with young people or related to your teaching subject. So you know, depending on your teaching subject there, you know, sometimes if business is your teaching subject and if you've got kind of a, a job that that is, is kind of at a graduate level um, that, you know, may, maybe you're working in a shop and maybe you're also kind of, you know, doing the maybe you're also doing the books or you're doing some of the the admin or or the, the wages or, you know, something else that 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 kind of a more senior level um, that perhaps you could include something like like that. On the PAC website, they do have details of what they consider as as you know relevant paid professional experience. So you could have a look there and see if there's anything that you have done or over the next while could do that would help you to gain an additional point um, because you're studying now. It's likely going to be be part time. So part time is either full time through the year, you know, as in you know, all the way through the year maybe a, you know, a couple of hours in, in the evenings or you know however that is or, or every weekend part-time is you know all the way through the year or part-time is also classed as full-time through the summer um, so sometimes things like um, maybe the cool camps you know if you were working in, in cool camps and you were doing coaching or soccer camp or anything like that and you were doing paid coaching um, that's some through the full summer um, then that can work possibly work in the grill tract if, if they're open again um, music lessons if they're to a group so you could have the, there's lots of opportunities depending on where you're coming from, where you would have the, the opportunity to gain um, an additional point for part time points, one point for, for each year. Um, so it is another option um, as, as well. So something to, to maybe have a look on the PAC website, read a little about, little bit about, see if you think that applies to, to you. 
Um, and all of this, I do appreciate, you know, it, it can seem quite complex at the start. So there is absolutely no problem in bringing any of your questions around this to us in the career service at any stage and just say, look, I'm not clear on this or I'm not clear on that. Um, and we'll absolutely um, help you as much as we can with that. So this you could kind of go through um, yourselves later on. It just gives you an idea of how you would uh, increase your points. So like I said, one point for each year of experience and then, you know, additional points. If maybe you had done another degree before you came back to college, um, maybe you, you did a, a certificate or a diploma before you came to college. So there are additional points that you can, can claim um, to add on to your tally, depending on what you may or may not have done um, previously. I've put this slide in so that you, you have it for reference. It's not something that you're going to need immediately, but it is actually a very common question that, that comes up. When you are applying for the PME through the PAC system, um, there are various pieces of documentation that you have to send along with it. Um, there's requirements from the Teaching Council that you explain what are the different um, modules that you've done in each of your subjects. And I will address that further on, but that form is actually part of the PAC application form. Um, but as well as that, then you actually have to, depending on your application, you have to upload other pieces of information. Um, so you may not need this now, but I've left it here so that you you have it kind of going forward if you have any questions and absolutely at any stage, please get in touch with us in the career service if you do have questions. Um, but depending on how you're claiming points, what you're claiming points for, you'll have to have some documentation to, to back that up. So that's what the additional documentation is, is for. The PME in DCU, as I mentioned, is very similar to the NUI system. It is also on the PAC website. Um, the closing date is usually February, but again, it is good to confirm that closer to the time because these are the details from, from this year. It's €80 Euro to apply just to, to DCU and the application is on the PAC website, but on a separate section of the PAC website compared to where the NUI form was. Here you can see that you can see the Professional Master of Education DCU on a separate page of the PAC website. So at any stage, again, just to familiarise yourself with the information, if you're interested in applying to DCU, you can go in there and have a look through the information just so you're familiar with what is involved. The PME in DCU is again run over two years. It's run in the evenings, um, usually from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. on a Tuesday and Wednesday evening. Um, one of the things that is different about the DCU program is when applying there, um, they do ask that you have organized your teaching practice placement as part of the application to the course. For any of the other programs, you don't need to have organized your teaching practice placement um, until you're offered a place on the course. But for DC, DCU, they do ask you to have organised your placement in advance. For Trinity College, again, the Professional Master of Education, it is a two year course. Um, they usually tend to have a closing date in November for their round one applications, um, but then do have do open again and have another round of applications accepted in usually sometime in February. For TCD, the application fee is 55 euro. Application is online. It's on Trinity's own website. Um, and places on the course are offered on the basis of your application form and then an interview. At any stage, you can go along to the TCD website, read up on the course. It's good to familiarise yourself with the content of the different courses, how the programmes are laid out, how the teaching practice is organised, just so that you're familiar with the setup of the different courses um, and how they might fit with your life and, and your, your circumstances. With Trinity, um, and this is something that, that can kind of confuse people sometimes, with Trinity, you apply under one subject. It's basically the way they organise their course. There's really only one door that you can go in in Trinity. So if you've got two subjects, let's say Irish and English, you apply under one subject. 
um, you go in that door, whatever that subject is, um, but you are still eligible to teach the other subject. Again, it's just the door that you use to get into the course. Um, so if you applied in under Irish and you were offered a place in the PME in Trinity under Irish, once you meet the Teaching Council criteria to also teach English, which is usually included in your degree, then you, you have no problem teaching your other subject as well. It's just the way that the course is, is structured. So again, this is here for reference for later. And again, please do come to us if you have any questions around that. Um, documentation that will be needed as part of the TCD application when you are applying. They have a few extra pieces of information that they ask you to include as part of the application form. Uh, one is a CV. And again, we've got samples of this on the website, or you can link to it to the resources section of Careers Connect. They look for a copy of your results. So there's details of how you would request them from Maynooth University. Um, they also look for a personal statement as part of your form. Very short, um, three questions talking about, you know, why, why you feel you would be suitable to, for a career in teaching. And again, in the career service, we're more than happy to help you with that and give you advice and feedback on that as, as you're doing it as well. So, as I said, uh, one specific subject in TCD, um, places are awarded based on the application form and then your interview. And one of the things that is very important for them, and again, it's good to know now because you have control over how you prepare now, uh, Trinity do look at um, any type of work with young people, whether it's paid or unpaid, it doesn't matter. So it can be voluntary work as well, but anything related to teaching, teaching experience, classroom observation, um, other work with young people, youth clubs, sports coaching, music, music lessons, anything that, that you do that shows um, an interest and an experience of, of working with young people or working with, with teenagers. So it's it's just useful to know as you've got a bit of time, maybe now kind of through the next year or so, um, that you could be gathering up some experience that might be beneficial in terms of your application going forward. The PME in UL is offered in certain subjects. Again, it's a two year course. Um, so again, the, the subjects most relevant to, to people from Maynooth University, obviously business, languages, maths, music and science. Um, they do offer PME in, in training as a PE teacher, but you have to have a degree that is related to PE. So you have to have an exercise science type of, of relevant degree to meet the teaching council criteria for that. Again, for the University of Limerick, Professional Master of Education, um, closing dates are usually um, February, March. Um, they advise that you apply by mid-January in, in your final year. Um, it is an interview um, in terms of assessing who gets a place on the course. Again, depending on the course that you're applying for, if it's music, there will also be an addition in terms of your instrument. And for the languages PME, um, some of the interview will be um, in your language as well, just to assess your language ability. You need to have a 2-2 in your overall degree. Um, to be eligible for a place on the course, but you don't have to have completed your degree when you are applying for the program. And finally, for the Professional Master of Education in Hibernia College for post-primary, um, they run two intakes every year. September and April. The course used to be unusual in that it was run online. Um, of course, that's that's what we're we're very much used to to now. So it is similar to what to what we've become accustomed to. Uh, most of the lectures and tutorials are online. Restrictions allowing um, some of the classes are then in person. Um, as well over, over different weekends. Um, again, you have your usual blocks of, of teaching practice as, as you would in any of the other PMEs. Um, application is online on the Hibernia website and the application fee is, is 95 euro. For Hibernia, your personal statement um, 
again explaining why you're interested in teaching why you'd like to train as a teacher is important um, you will be called for interview where they again want to know kind of that you know what's involved in the career of being a teacher so classroom observation any other experience working with with young people having spoken to, to people working as teachers um, will give them a sense as with the other colleges that you know what you're getting into um, you understand the work that is uh, involved day to day in being a teacher um, and you think that that's something that would work for you that that's why you you want to do the course that's why you want to train as a teacher one of the areas that do cause that that does cause um, confusion for people sometimes is around the, the teaching council registration and the subject criteria um, now this has actually changed just before Christmas um, last year so this was actually Actually just updated in um, the end of November 2020. Um, so basically what happens in order to be registered with the Teaching Council to teach any particular subject, they have a list of criteria that you have to meet in order to be an English teacher or a French teacher or a maths teacher or, or any subject teacher. Um, that you can view the criteria at the list there in the in the link um, and it basically basically goes through what are the criteria that that you have to meet to teach any specific subject so the criteria has actually um, changed and is maybe not as as strict as as it used to be in terms of some of the criteria particularly around used to be specific criteria for junior cert subjects um, and that isn't there anymore there's no criteria around junior cert subjects anymore the only criteria is that relating to leave insert subjects um, on this document you can see the criteria for any specific subject some of it is quite broad it says that it has to be a level eight degree it has to be at least 180 credits your degrees will all be that because your degrees are 60 credits each year for three years so 180 credits at least more if it's a four-year degree um, they say it has to be a level eight degree it has to be 180 credits you have to have at least 60 credits in your specific subject that's where you need to be cautious around choosing a major minor because sometimes with a major minor you might only end up with 55 credits um, so you do have to make sure that you have 60 credits in your specific subject and then once you've met all those criteria they do also specify that there is specific module content that you have to cover and that is different for each subject so when you are choosing your modules it is important to just make sure that you've looked at the teaching council criteria um, and that over the course of your three years, not in any specific year, but over the course of your three years, you have you're able to tick all of the boxes that that they require you to tick. Once you do that, that's fine. You, you'll be able to register with them then. So the criteria is, is quite clearly set out. Um, so it is a good idea to just read through it. And then as you're choosing your modules, have a look through it. Make sure you're 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 happy that you're meeting the criteria. If you're in any way confused about it, there is no problem Come and talking to us in the Career Centre about it and we will do our best to, to help you out as much as we can um, in the Career Service. OK. So what can you do now to, to make sure that you are as prepared as you can? Um, I suppose as as the year goes on, final year in particular, and you know we'll, we'll get very busy. So um, if you have some of the groundwork laid in in second year, it can make life um, a little bit easier for you. Um, I suppose the first thing to think about is is study. Um, the better your grades, um, then the higher your points. The higher your points, your better your, the better your chance of getting a place on the course, um, particularly for, say, the NUI universities. Um, the other universities do factor in um, grades, but it isn't the only thing that they look at. The NUI universities, Maynooth University, Cork, uh, UCD and Galway, um, it is largely based on your grades. So the better your grades uh, at the end of second year, the, the better your chances of being offered 
put in place on the PME when you apply in final year. Um, the next thing to think about is the teaching council criteria that we spoke about there. Um, have a look through the criteria document for your subjects and just bear that in mind when you are choosing your modules. Look at what you've chosen last year, uh, what you're choosing this year, um, and then again you will, you will be able to, to use some of your modules from final year to meet that criteria as well. Um, again, depending then on the courses that you're applying to for some of the other courses like say um, TCD where they want you to have a CV as part of the application process at some stage when you had a, had a window uh, where you had some time you could look at putting together your CV. We've got templates on the careers website um, so that would be something else. You could just another piece of work that, that is done that, that you don't have to do everything all together when you're doing your applications in final year. And then also look at maybe getting some some relevant experience, whether it's paid or, or it's unpaid, um, getting some relevant um, experience working with working with children, uh, working with young people, anything related to related to teaching for the NUIs for it to count for points. It has to be paid um, for Trinity UL Hibernia. Volunteering is is also fine. Um, also, just be aware if you are thinking of applying, say, to, to Trinity or UL or Hibernia or any of the colleges that have an interview, um, maybe just, you know, as the year coming progresses, um, think about anything that you hear in the news about teaching, about changes in teaching, about maybe the, the leave insert, the curriculum, um, because when you go for interview, you can quite often be asked about maybe last year's leave insert paper or any new changes that are coming up. So if you just have one ear open to kind of listen to what's going on, you'll be a bit more familiar with it. You can obviously prepare as you get closer to an interview anyway, um, but it is good to just maybe have, have an ear out to listen out for some of that um, so that you're, you're, you're more familiar with the world um, of, of education and teaching and what's going on as you prepare for your interviews later. Um, and as I said, any questions you have about any of it, um, please bring them to us in the career service and, and we'll do everything we can to, to help you with that. So then to look at, at primary teaching in Ireland and what are the rules in and what are the things that you can do to make sure that you are in the best place possible to apply when you do come to apply in final year. In terms of the courses, there are two routes. There is the full-time course and there what was once distinct as the, the distance or the online course in Hibernia College, quite quite similar to, to how all colleges work at the moment, both fully recognised by the Teaching Council and the, the Department of, of Education. The entry requirements are set by the Department of Education. Um, so these are the entry requirements that were required for 2021 entry. Um, on occasion they can change, um, but this is what they are at the, the moment. So you need an H4 in Leave and Search Irish Honours. Um, you need an O4 or H7 in Leave and Search Maths and an O4 or H7 in Leave and Search English. Um, and also you can see there the, the previous grades, the older grades. Um, as well. Um, Hibernia um, have similar, have the same entry requirements. Um, you can have, have a look at the, the details on their website as well. The Leave Inside Honours Irish tends to be um, the, the entry requirement that causes the most issue, um, maths sometimes, but, but generally the, the H4 is, is, is the one that causes the problem. If you don't have the H4, what can you do? There are a few options. Um, so probably the um, most straightforward option is the, the TEG, the Chastas Europe, uh, Nagoelga, uh, which is actually run by the Minis University Centre for Irish Studies. Um, you can find details on the TEG website. There are various different levels of TEG. Um, A is the lowest level, C is the highest level. There are two levels within each level. So there is an A1, an A2, a B1, a B2, a C1 and a C2. So the B2 is the highest of the two B levels. If it was a case that you didn't have the H4 in the Leave and Search Honours Irish, then uh, what I would suggest is you do look at sitting the, the TEG B exams. Now, it might be a case that you mightn't be in a position 
standard of Irish wise to go straight in and set the B2 uh, exam. Uh, it might be better to start and set the B1 exam um, and then the following year um, or later on set the B2 exam. Um, so it's good to know this now because then you could look at getting at least one of your TEG uh, exams uh, done in, in second year um, and then maybe look at getting the other one, um, the B2 in third year, depending on, on just how, how time allows and, and how your schedule allows. Um, aside from doing the TEG, other options, you can go back and set the, the Leave and Search Honours Irish. Uh, you can look at training in the in the UK um, as well. There are other entry requirements and other factors around, around that, um, but it is an option that some people will choose as well. Um, and again, as I said, Hibernia have a list of the, the alternative qualifications that they accept on their website, but it is pretty much the same as, as I've specified above there. Other qualifications, it does happen that people sometimes um, haven't got the 04 maths qualification. Um, if it's a case that you don't have that, there are other qualifications that are acceptable. Um, the main one that people tend to choose is there is um, a level five maths course called 5N1833. Um, so if you Google that, you will find it. There are links below there where you can see it. That course is offered um, online and you have to get either a merit or a distinction in that um, 5N1833 course. Um, and if you do that, that meets the maths criteria um, as well. So it is another option for the maths without having to go back and set the leave and certain maths. So in terms of, of preparing now, um, if you're missing one of those uh, entry criteria, the sooner you look about remedying that, the better. Um, so you can contact the TAG office uh, around setting the either B1 or B2 uh, exams, and they also run language classes to help you prepare for that, or look into the maths course if you are looking at setting that. If you wanted to look at resetting the um, Leave and Cert course, then obviously you contact the, the State Examinations Commission um, and their, their details is there, and you sit as, as what's called an independent candidate. You're not attached to a school. Um, you, you, just, you just sit it. Um, externally. In terms of training, so your PME for the, the for post-primary, um, it's run in the college-based courses in four different colleges. So it's run in the Freble Department in Maynooth University, in the Drumcondra campus on DCU, uh, in Colostewara in Marino and in Mary Macmillan College in Limerick. Um, it's a two-year course. Um, each year it, it runs the Department of Education decide whether or not they're going to run it again. It has been running um, you know, for, for a considerable number of years now but we do always have to wait for it to be sanctioned each year before it's advertised and, and before you, you can apply. You can find more information on it on our website, on our information sheets. Um, you can go directly to the website um, or you can link in through the resources section of Careers Connect um, and that will also take you to the websites of the various universities running the course as well. The PME primary course, it usually starts in September. Um, applications are different depending on the colleges that you are applying to. So for Maynooth University, Freble and Marino, it is an online, a joint application, one form to apply to both of the colleges. For DCU, it's an online application through PAC. Um, and then it is also a direct application to, to Mary Mackett College in Limerick for, for their course. You can apply to all of the courses, so you're not limited in the number that you can apply to. You can have, submit an application for all of the courses. When to apply for the full-time course, as I said, it usually starts in September. Uh, you usually apply in final year. The course is usually advertised um, around January um, of, of, of final year. Um, the closing date is usually around about March. The interviews are usually May um, and offers come out after that. So it all happens kind of in the second semester of, of final year. For Hibernia, they have two intakes every year, one in September and one in April. So when you are in final year, you can apply for the intake, which would be the following September. So you can usually apply for that in, say, the summer or coming to the end of a final year. You can usually apply for that intake into Hibernia then. 
As part of the application process for the full-time courses, um, you have to sit an oral exam before you can apply for your actual place on the course. This exam is called the TAG level B1. You might recall we spoke about B2, which is the higher level in terms of meeting the Leave Insert criteria. Um, the oral at B1 is, is the exam that you must uh, sit and um, score at least 65% in, in order to be eligible to apply for the PME primary. Um, now, that exam is advertised, it's open to apply um, in usually the, the January, before the January of, of final year when, when you would be applying for the PME. But what I would advise is if you were considering applying for the PME, that you try to actually do your TAG B1 in second year. It takes the pressure off final year. Um, it's something that you don't have to do in final year because you've already got it in the bag. Um, or if it was a case, and it sometimes happens that you sit the TAG B1 and you get, for example, 61%, you don't get 65% then you can again set the B1 exam in final year um, and you're not having to, to, to wait another year to meet the TAG criteria. So while the, the TAG exam um, is, is advertised that, that you can sit it as part of the application process um, in final year, I would advise that, that if you were considering primary school teaching that you look at doing your TAG B1 exam this year in second year um, so that hopefully you get your 65% and then your TAG B1 one is is in the bag for you going forward into to final year because your tag results will still hold for the following year. If obviously you need to set the B2 to meet the leave insert criteria, then you can move on and, and set the B2 as well. But if you've got the leave insert H4 and you just need to set the tag B1 to meet the oral requirement to apply for the course, then I would say definitely do that in, in second year so they, that you've got it sorted and out of the way before you get to final year. And again, if you have any questions about that, please bring those to us in, in the careers service and we will we'll help any way that we can. Power Place is awarded for the primary PME. You send in your application form um, and assuming that you meet the, the entry criteria, uh, the entry requirements, uh, everybody is called for interview. Um, and then the, the reason people tend to not get places um, feedback from the courses would be that they generally haven't done enough research into teaching. Um, so what I would always advise, advise, you know, before COVID became a problem, I would always have advised students to get into a school, do some classroom observation. You're not looking for teaching experience. You're just actually looking for classroom observation. You're sitting in the corner. You're helping if it's needed. Um, otherwise, you're watching what's happening. You're talking to teachers. You're becoming familiar with the curriculum and the current issues in teaching. Um, you're seeing what are the, the challenges that a teacher faces in a classroom day to day um, because the more you know about the work of a teacher the more you know about what happens in the classroom now as opposed to what you remember from when you were in the classroom or from even from TY which is quite a while ago now um, the more you know about what happens in the classroom now um, the more um, the stronger your answer will be when they ask you why do you want to be a teacher why do you want to place on this course um, that you can say I know what happens in a classroom I know the work of, of a teacher I know the challenges that they that they face um, and that's something that I would like to train to do that's something that I, I think I have the skills to be able to do so um, the more you know about the work of a teacher the more you can talk about what happens in the classroom whether that's from being in a classroom or if restrictions don't allow then maybe it's just from spending time talking to teachers about you know what are the current issues that they face children with additional needs in the classroom how are the, how are their needs met how does a, tr a teacher manage his or her time during the day to make sure that they can accommodate the needs of all of the students in their class everything that goes on in the classroom the more you know the better your answers at interview will be you can have a look on the Freble website. They've got a lot of information in terms of the entry requirement, the selection procedure. So very useful information on the Freble website.
This is the interview assessment form. So you can see the things that they look at in terms of what are the criteria that they look for. The main one being suitability to teach and motivation. So obviously, the more you know about teaching, the more you know what are the key skills that a teacher should have. And the more you can show you've got those skills, the higher your marks are going to are going to be. So what can you do now to prepare? Practice your Irish. OK, consider signing up for the TEG B1 now um, next year so that you can um, have that done. And make sure that you're getting the 65 percent in that exam so that you've got that part of the, the criteria sorted. Um, if possible, to get observation in schools, ideally a variety of classes or a variety of schools. But if it's just one school, um, then maybe, you know, whether you could get junior, senior infants and then maybe say fourth or fifth class as well. So that you get a sense of of what's different. Um, contact the principal, um, explain that you are, obviously this would be for September at this stage because I'd say things are, are quite busy in schools at the moment um, and in terms of the COVID restrictions there's probably very little flexibility in terms of being able to take people in, possibly things might might be uh, better in terms of opportunities for that come, come September. Um, but talk to the the principal explain that you are looking for observation. You're not looking for teaching experience um, and you just want to come in and sit in the corner and observe. Happy to help if that's needed, but you just want to observe how, how the work of a teacher um, is done in, in the classroom every day. Um, if you can't get that, then obviously just talk to teachers. Um, anybody that you know is, is, is a teacher. And again, if you could get a, a variety of experience in terms of teachers of you know different classes, different types of schools, big schools, small schools, big classes, all of that, because the more you know, the, the better informed you will come across at interview. So like I said, look at sitting the, the TEG exam in, in second year. Um, on the careers presentation, I have got um, slides that I've gone through in terms of, you know, for the for the, the current final years who would have applied for the course this year. So you can go through, you can see the application forms, you can see the types of questions that are asked. So you have an idea um, of, of what's expected. It's a bit down the road for you yet, but it's good to just be aware because maybe when you know the types of questions that are asked on the form, you might just be thinking, OK, well, you know, this experience or this the time I gathered this skill or, you know, this voluntary work or this part of my part time job, that that's actually going to be valuable for me in, in terms of if you know applying for teaching courses later. Um, please feel free to contact us in the in the Career Service through Careers Connect. If you have any questions, you can either go into Careers Connect and send us a query or go into Careers Connect and book an appointment. As I said, to log into Connect, um, mu.ie forward slash Careers Connect or you can get to it through our website. Um, log in with your student number and your usual MU password, um, and then you can send us a question or book, or book an appointment. These are some of the information sheets that, that um, I've, I've put together. Um, so you can access those on the website or in the resources tab of Careers Connect, um, just general information on, on the various routes into, into teaching. Um, so if you have any questions, um, I'm more than happy to, to, to take them at any stage um, or just send them in as a query or book an appointment in, in Careers Connect uh, and we'll help you as best we can from there. Thank you.